1886, Robert Wood Johnson enlisted his younger brothers in an eponymous startup built around the safety first motto. Johnson's baby powder grew out of a line of medicated plasters, sticky rubber strips loaded with mustard and other home remedies. When customers complained of skin irritation, we awarded 22 women who claimed asbestos in Johnson & Johnson baby powder contributed to their ovarian cancer. The brothers sent packets of talc. Soon, mothers began applying the talc to infants' diaper-chafed skin. The Johnsons took note. They added a fragrance that would become one of the most recognizable in the world, sifted the talc into tin boxes, and, in 1893, began selling it as Johnson's baby powder. Over time, Johnson's baby powder has been a staple product trusted by generations of parents for their babies for over a century. Pure Johnson's baby powder from Johnson & Johnson. It's a feeling you never outgrow. With its signature fresh scent and ability to provide soothing relief, the fine white powder has become deeply ingrained in the baby care routine of millions worldwide. Johnson's baby powder grew in popularity due to its marketing efforts aimed at nursing mothers. Advertisements presented baby powder as the ideal way for mothers to keep their babies comfortable in hot weather. Generations of women came to see it as an essential postpartum care product for preventing chafing and absorbing moisture. Beyond just infants, Johnson's baby powder became a grooming essential for people of all ages. Athletes use it to keep skin dry and prevent chafing on long workouts. It became popular as a foot powder to absorb sweat and reduce odor. The powder's versatility led it to become a bathroom cabinet staple in many households. For over 130 years, Johnson's baby powder has delivered on what it promised, until now. For over a decade, Johnson's baby powder has been fighting to pull its name from the mud. They've had to deal with 40,000 lawsuits involving asbestos contamination. However, before we get well into the gritty details, let's explore what asbestos contamination is. It shouldn't sound so bad, right? Well, asbestos is a set of six naturally occurring silicate minerals that have long been known to cause serious and sometimes deadly illnesses in humans. The main diseases associated with asbestos exposure include asbestosis, lung cancer, and mesothelioma. These diseases can take decades to develop after inhalation of asbestos fibers, yet the fibers are exceptionally thin and able to penetrate deep into lung tissue. Of particular concern is the mineral form of asbestos, known as tremolite asbestos. It is chemically and physically very similar to the mineral talc, which was commonly used in baby powder and other cosmetic products for its softness. Yep, you guessed it, talc deposits are often found intermingled with tremolite asbestos veins naturally occurring in the earth. This was notable in historic talc mining regions like Vermont that supplied materials to Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson sourced talc for its baby powder products from various mining operations over many decades of production. One of their key talc suppliers was the Windsor Minerals Mine located in Vermont. In the early 1950s, J&J routinely received shipments of talc ore from the Windsor Minerals Mine in Vermont, which it then processed and milled into powder form for use in baby powder and other consumer products. To ensure product quality, it was common practice for J&J scientists to send samples from each incoming shipment of crude talc to outside analytical labs for testing. Documents recovered from the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health revealed that in December 1949, one such independent lab analyzed an ore sample from the Windsor mine. Under a microscope, the lab discovered fibrous amphiboles and clay materials interspersed within the talc, along with another non-fibrous type of mineral it could not identify. The lab recommended that J&J consult with mineralogical experts to determine the exact composition. Following up on this finding, J&J scientists submitted portions of the same sample to at least two other labs for identification in early 1950. Both labs, including one at the University of Pennsylvania, concluded the unknown mineral was tremolite, a type of asbestos known to be hazardous if its microscopic fibers were inhaled. Lab reports sent directly to top J&J research managers clearly informed them that their Windsor talc deposit contained the carcinogenic asbestos fibers of tremolite. This marked the earliest known documentation that J&J received direct warnings from objective, scientific sources that asbestos was present in one of its core talc product ingredient sources. 
yet statements to regulators at the time did not reflect this contamination issue. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, J&J &J continued obtaining talc from Windsor, as well as other American and Italian sources. As public health scrutiny on asbestos rose during this era, the company commissioned further testing of its talc supplies. Letters and lab reports that have now emerged in litigation describe how tremolite asbestos was again identified in talc specimens from various J&J &J mines during this period, including at concentrations up to 1.8% in one sample. However, some J&J &J executives expressed skepticism about the veracity of tests showing asbestos, according to meeting minutes. They did not always share the adverse lab results with regulators or change sourcing practices and continued marketing talc powders as asbestos-free. It was not until 2000 that J&J &J began requiring talc suppliers to test for and limit asbestos to avoid further contamination issues coming to light. By then, talc mining operations like those at Windsor had long ceased. At various times from then into the early 2000s, reports by scientists at J&J, &J, outside labs, and J&J's supplier yielded similar findings. The reports identify contaminants in talc and finished powder products as asbestos or describe them in terms typically applied to asbestos, such as fiber form and rods. Most internal J&J &J asbestos test reports do not find asbestos. However, while J&J's testing methods improved over time, they have always had limitations that allow trace contaminants to go undetected, and only a tiny fraction of the company's talc is tested. The World Health Organization and other authorities recognize no safe level of exposure to asbestos. While most people exposed never develop cancer, for some, even small amounts of asbestos are enough to trigger the disease years later. Just how small hasn't been established. Many plaintiffs allege that the amounts they inhaled when they dusted themselves with tainted talcum powder were enough. The evidence of what J&J &J knew surfaced after people who suspected that talc caused their cancers hired lawyers experienced in the decades-long deluge of litigation involving workers exposed to asbestos. Some of the lawyers knew from those earlier cases that talc producers tested for asbestos, and they began demanding J&J's testing documentation. Court documents have revealed that Johnson & Johnson knew its talc contained asbestos as early as the 1950s. By 2018, J&J &J was paying out multi-million dollar verdicts over asbestos exposure from contaminated talcum powder. Johnson & Johnson made an announcement in October 2021 that their talc subsidiary was filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. This move came after the company had set aside almost $4 billion to cover the numerous lawsuits against its iconic product, Johnson's Baby Powder, which was claimed to cause cancer, including ovarian cancer and mesothelioma. These lawsuits have led to courts awarding billions of dollars to plaintiffs. Recently, the company proposed a trust fund of $8.9 billion to settle its talc-related lawsuits. In August 2022, Johnson & Johnson announced that it would discontinue global sales of talcum powder in 2023. The company had already stopped sales of its talc-based baby powder in the US and Canada in 2020, but it continued sales in other countries until retailers ran out of stock. A cornstarch-based version of Johnson's baby powder will continue to be available worldwide. Retailers throughout the US pulled J&J's talc-based baby powder from shelves in October 2019, after the US Food and Drug Administration found asbestos in one of the containers. The container was part of a 33,000-bottle batch that the company voluntarily recalled on October 18, 2019. The discovery occurred when the FDA conducted a review of 43 cosmetic samples and found asbestos contamination in nine of them. It has been known for years that many sources of talc are naturally contaminated with asbestos, which can cause mesothelioma. This is because both minerals often occur in the same geological formations. This issue highlights how consumer trust can be shattered due to even a single lapse in product safety. Do you have an opinion on where corporate responsibility ends and litigation begins when it comes to public health crises? Share your thoughts below. Johnson & Johnson, like many other companies accused of using asbestos in their products, has always publicly denied that its talcum powder products can cause cancer. However, documents that were unsealed in court revealed that J&J &J company executives were aware of asbestos liabilities as early as the 1950s. 
Internal company reports highlighted the need to suppress concerns over asbestos contamination at talc mines in Vermont and Italy. In addition, despite J&J decision makers considering switching baby powder's main ingredient from talc to cornstarch to avoid liability, the company never stopped selling talcum powder. Tests conducted in the latter half of the 20th century revealed asbestos in J&J's talc, which the company covered up, failing to report the contamination. Some of the talc originated in the Windsor Materials talc mine in Vermont, where one official recommended adding citric acid to help hide the presence of chrysotile asbestos fibers. Now juries are holding Johnson & Johnson accountable for asbestos-related cancers its products caused. In April 2023, J&J proposed a new bankruptcy plan to settle its talc lawsuits. Johnson & Johnson wants to establish an $8.9 billion trust fund through its talc subsidiary, LTL Management, to handle current and future talc claims. Two groups of law firms representing talc plaintiffs disagree on the plan. One group approves of the new plan, while the other says LTL Management is not in financial distress and does not qualify for bankruptcy protection. U.S. bankruptcy judge Michael B. Kaplan instructed the opposing sides to create a new reorganization plan with the help of two mediators. Additionally, the U.S. trustee, which is part of the U.S. Department of Justice, filed a motion to dismiss the new bankruptcy plan. The department also filed a similar motion to dismiss the original plan. Johnson & Johnson initially offered to fund the trust with $2 billion. However, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Third Circuit rejected the original bankruptcy plan in January 2023. An advocacy group representing cancer victims accused J&J of withdrawing an initial funding agreement with the subsidiary of $61.5 billion to signal financial distress and justify the bankruptcy filing. The appeals court ruling found the company did not file for bankruptcy in good faith because it still had access to those assets. J&J has reportedly spent approximately $1 billion on its legal defense for nearly 40,000 talc claims. Settlements and verdicts have cost the company an additional $3.5 billion. Johnson & Johnson had set aside $3.9 billion for talc-related litigation in February 2021, according to a regulatory filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Johnson & Johnson's brand, once known for its commitment to health, safety, and trust, has faced a significant blow to its image following reports of asbestos contamination in its baby powder. The contamination raised serious concerns among consumers, leading to widespread scrutiny and legal battles. According to YouGov Brand Index, a market research firm that tracks consumer attitudes, J&J's brand reputation has fluctuated significantly in recent years. The company's development of a COVID-19 vaccine had a positive impact on its brand image. However, the brand has suffered from reports of asbestos contamination, faulty pelvic mesh devices, and the company's role in the opioid epidemic. Johnson & Johnson discontinued talcum powder sales throughout the world in 2023, possibly in an attempt to restore its brand image and avoid future talc liabilities. Consumers had already lost trust in J&J's iconic baby powder by the time the company ended global sales. Some consumers saw J&J's decision to discontinue talcum powder as an admission of guilt, while the company said it was a commercial decision. Asbestos contamination and other controversies have dealt a significant blow to J&J's brand. Restoring the company's image will require transparency and a continued focus on consumer safety. That's it for today's video. What are your thoughts? Let us know in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Your support helps us reach more people with our content. Thanks for watching and consider watching our other videos right here.